so I'm Kent Bertelsson. I uh, will uh, not directly talk about the supercapacitors in the EVs. I will talk about the power electronics used for the supercapacitors, just as Niklas said here. So I'm a researcher in uh, power electronics. And uh, this is more or less a summary of uh, what Niklas just said, that uh, the... Where's the laser here, is it? That the battery have uh, high energy density, and... Uh, but... Uh <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the supercapacitor have a much lower energy density, but can handle the peak, peak power much more efficiently. And uh, these have a high cycle lifetime, these have a low cycle lifetime. So if we look at the specific energy versus the specific power, uh, then we have uh, batteries in this range and capacitors here. So the capacitor is better for the power and the capacitor is better for power and, and the battery better for the energy. And uh, I have uh, the asterisk here, the, the mass and cost. That is mainly what is tried to address by uh, reducing the uh, in by using paper-based supercapacitors instead. So, uh, also Nikla said that this is uh, by uh, combining these two technologies is the most efficient way to uh, to get the good performers in the in the bank. But uh, so we have a battery bank and the capacitor bank. And uh, by introducing converters here instead, you can uh, improve the efficiency significant. And uh, the reason is, is this, that a capacitor is uh, behaving dramatically different compared to a battery. I mean, a battery, you know, have a fairly constant voltage depending in uh, independent of how much charge is stored in the uh, in the battery. So this is uh, the same scale as this one. If you an uh, supercapacitor have a square behavior of the energy versus the voltage. So if you have the energy here, then you have this kind of behavior. Which means that when you store much in the beginning, you have a very sharp rise in voltage. Uh, and uh, you still would like to design a capacitor so that you utilize as much as possible of uh, of, of the energy. Uh, so, uh, but if as you have a square here, it is not that worse. You have, if you would like to use 90% of the energy in the supercapacitor for regeneration breaking, then uh, you have, uh, then you can go up to. 30% of the maximum voltage. Uh, but uh, one uh, main problem when you are trying to use, uh, use the supercapacitor in a car is that when you start here, start from, uh, you start from a pre-charge of the capacitor of 30 volt. Uh, then uh, the speed is running quite fast it generates quite high voltage. But as the speeds go down, the back EMF of the motor goes down, so it generates lower voltage. Uh, but in the meantime, the voltage of the capacitor is increasing. So here you need to have a large uh, step down, and here you need to have a step up in order to continue to charge the capacitor. So it if you take the same uh, same uh, approach as for the uh, uh, using 90% of the energy in the car in the kinetic energy if you having if you would like to utilize 90% of that energy then you need to be able to break it down to uh, one third of uh, the top max speed but overall this means that a converter between the supercapacitor and the and the motor needs to handle the voltage variation from the nominal voltage down to one third 
of the nominal voltage from and uh, at the same time we're able to handle one third of the input voltage nominal to this one. So we have a factor of 10 times of the step up, step down transformation range that you need to be able to handle if you should work efficiently. And uh, I mean, if you, this is a typical have as you have in a in a uh, supercapacitor regeneration braking, you have the motor here. So uh, when it's running as a motor, you discharge from the battery supercap through the motor. And while braking, it goes down, reverse, and recharging again. But if you look at this, what you have in between here when you're doing this uh, braking, you have the generator. Let's say that we have a 40 volt system that I've been calculating on here. The uh, super cap is first charged at uh, 10 volt. Then you have 30 volt over these two resistors, the generator and the capacitor, which means that when you start breaking, most of the power is just lost in resistances. Uh, I also said you needed to be able to, when you go down in voltage, you need to be able to boost up the voltage so you can s continue to charge a capacitor that is uh, increasing the voltage. So uh, that you can do by having introducing a, a boost converter. It's an another transistor. The problem with the boost converter, which can boost up the energy, is that uh, when you take into account the resistances that you have in the in the generator and the capacitor the performance drops radically and uh, typically you need you need to have this this one super cap resistance one tenth of the generator this is maybe one milliohm the motor is uh, in most case higher So by just uh, doing simple calculations here, here we have the braking. So here, the, you see the velocity drops, and that is because of the, uh, the kinetic energy, and the the uh, so that it generates in lower voltage. While at the meantime, the capacitor is charging. So here in this part, then it's limited by the the rating of the capacitor, how much the current the capacitor can handle. Have an efficiency of uh, 30 to 50 percent. Uh, in this range, uh, then you are uh, just charging it uh, with, with the by resistive, having a source and the resistor and just let it charge. Then you have a, a bit higher efficiency and it goes down, goes up to uh, exactly at this point when you have more or less the same voltage out from the motor as you have in the capacitor. Then you can get quite high efficiencies. On the other hand, the braking power also goes down. In order to increase the braking power, you need to start switching. Then the efficiency drops. So, I mean, this really is shows the importance of having a high efficient converter in uh, in between there and uh, especially important is the to be able to handle the large voltage variations of this converter and this is uh, not something a normal converter does uh, so we are working on a reconfigurable converter so at high voltage we have connecting the transformers in series and at low voltages we are connecting the transformers in parallel and then we can reach much higher variations in the in the voltage so very simplified it looks something like this so here we can have here we have a turn ratio of 4 to 1 2 to 1 and we can go, go down to 1 to 1 so instead of having a single converter maybe we can handle a variation of factor 2 use dividing it here you can have a factor of 4 here we can have a factor of eight. 
so more or less you can reach the goal of the requirements. So this is a picture of this kind of transformer module that we will will be using to achieve this. So the uh, the ambitions for this one is to move this line. The, I mean the peak efficiency is not the problem, but you need to have a high efficiency over the full voltage range range while you are braking. Otherwise, you will not use the effic efficiently use the energy efficiently. So 